Well, hello again. Uh, welcome to Liverpool City Centre. Uh, there is a Christmas fair on behind me, as you can probably see in here. Um, this is not a review of the D70. It's me using it for the first time in a long time. I've I'm as curious as you are to see how it performs in 2021. First time out in earnest with the D70. I've come down to Liverpool waterfront and straight away hit a problem. Um, it was working when I was trying out the camera um, just the other day, but uh, for some reason the autofocus has now stopped. So the shots that I have taken so far, not very many. Um, I'm relying on good old manual focus. And it's probably a good job that in my style of photography, autofocus is really an irrelevance. So let's crack on. I'm sure you can recognize the library buildings and uh, the statue that I'm going to photograph is um, just in front of there. Well, that was quite interesting. I think I've got the shot that I wanted of the statues. Um, and uh, had another little glitch along the way. Um, went to try and take the first image and it was telling me to format the memory card for some reason. Um, so, simply removed the CF card and popped it back in. No problem. Um, not quite sure what that was all about. Maybe just lack of use, I don't know. Um, but we'll have a look at that image when I get back. And um, it's, it's uh, one of the most popular spots in Liverpool for um, people to take selfies um, because it's right in front of the library buildings, which you can see behind me. And um, the shot that I've just taken, I think, is a completely different interpretation of it. Well, from my point of view anyway. So um, looking forward to having a look at that. Hope six megapixels is enough to do it justice. That's the only thing. It is a gorgeous morning. Um, cold, but very bright as you can tell. So we'll, uh, we'll crack on and see what else we can get done.
Ah, well, now you join me on the steps of the uh, Victoria Monument, which stands on the site of the original uh, castle that was built in Liverpool. <clears throat> um, in front of me, behind the camera, we've got the uh, law courts. And uh, beyond me, just up the street that you can see there, is Liverpool Town Hall. Lots of noise, many noisy seagulls around today. Um, I've had yet another glitch with the compact flashcard. It um, briefly told me that it could not be used. I have a feeling it might be down to the memory capacity. Four gigs seems a lot for a 17-year-old um, camera to handle, but I don't know. However, um, it's cleared. I've been taking a few more images. Um, all of the shots I've taken so far have been at an ISO rating of 320 and I've just reduced it down to 200. So we'll see um, how we get on. Well, good morning. Day two of the D70 test, if you like, to see whether I can use it and if it's still viable 17 years after it was announced. Um, today, very different weather conditions, very grey and overcast, um, quite damp, and I've come to St James's Gardens, in actual fact, technically, it's St James's Mount, right by the Anglican Cathedral, which you can see in the background. And I didn't know until today that St James's Mount was the first ever public park in Liverpool, um, opened in 1767. Of course, long before the cathedral was even dreamt of. Um, and it just gives, or it used to give, a lovely vista across the city down below and the waterfront. Um, beneath me, over in that direction, is um, what was originally a quarry. Um, and the rock from there was hewn to make many of the public buildings in Liverpool and it was then converted into Liverpool's main cemetery so that's where we're going to be heading next but I'm going to see what I can get out of the D70 today just an update um, on the glitches that I had yesterday I've had the same thing happen uh, the camera telling me to format the memory card again just now um, took two attempts to get that right Overnight, the auto-focusing system came back into life. I'm traveling quite light. I've only got the 18 to 55 with me again today. Um, the 28 to 200, uh, a bit too big and heavy for me to cope with on my electric bike, which I'll probably give you a shot of later. I may not have a Dexter, but I've got a Fido. You'll get the connection. Um, so yeah, it's onward and upward, and um, fingers crossed that the autofocus keeps working. One of the biggest differences that I noticed immediately using manual focus on a DSLR, my eyes aren't what they used to be, um, and manually focusing through an optical viewfinder, and quite a small one at that, is really difficult when you've come off the back of a mirrorless camera with image magnification, zebra stripes all the rest of it it's very very difficult to get accurate manual focus on these things but fingers crossed it's going to keep working for me today
So, welcome to day three of the D70 test. Um, today I've come out with the 28 to 200 and straight away I've noticed that the autofocusing is much um, faster with this lens. Um, this of course is the old uh, D series uh, lens with the screw drive so I suspect that the um, 18 to 55 is sluggish possibly through lack of use maybe needs um, servicing in some way or other um, but anyway uh, 28 to 200 I've come down more to the central university stroke business area of Liverpool this morning um, it's another grey day yesterday started out this way and then brightened up beautifully as you may have seen in some of the photographs um, today is grey but dry so I've come down here we've got many more sort of high-rise buildings around here so I'm hoping to try and get some stacking effect using perspective uh, with the longer reach of this lens um, but we will give it a go and see how we get on Well, there we are, using the D70 in 2021, 17 years after it was released. I asked the question when I trailed this particular video, was it still usable, was it viable? And the answer is yes, with caveats. The first caveat is that uh, if you are new to digital photography, maybe coming from a film camera, in particular, let's say a Nikon film camera, like a, one of the F, later F range, like the F60, um, then you will find the controls on the D70 exactly the same. There's very little difference between the two. If, on the other hand, you are going to use a D70 and you are maybe already the proud owner of a much, much more modern DSLR or, heaven forbid, a mirrorless camera, then it's going to be a struggle for you. Why is that, I hear you asking everybody, all the three or four people that are watching. Um, I'll tell you why. Um, it's akin to using a film camera because if you, like so many of us, uh, chimp the back of your camera to look at the results to make sure it's you know, in focus and correctly exposed, then when you switch back to the D70, it has a tiny low resolution LCD screen on the back. Um, and it's just about impossible to tell what the exposure is like. Uh, I made the mistake of uh, checking an image of the, you probably saw it in the video, of the uh, pointed um, apex of a roof on a fairly modern building and I was convinced it had overexposed it. In actual fact, the matrix metering had got it right. I underexposed it by two stops. Looked great on the back of the camera, um, but you get back to the computer and you correct it and suddenly you've got horrendous amounts of noise in the image so it's just 
impossible to use that little LCD screen. The later cameras like the D40 and so on uh, had a much bigger screen so that um, isn't an issue with the slightly more modern cameras to this one. You'd find it very difficult going from a mirrorless camera to this one. There's no live view, of course. Everything has to be done through the optical viewfinder. As you know, on day one, the autofocusing did not work for me. It came back into life. It's now working absolutely fine. So I think it was just lack of use. That's really what caused the issue. Uh, the glitches with the compact flash card cleared up. That is now working absolutely fine. I had zero problem with the battery. I took about 250 shots over the three days, didn't touch the battery whatsoever, and it's still showing fully charged. So that's a definite bonus. You could go on for days and days and days with this and not have to worry about recharging your battery. Um, it's quite a substantial camera, although it's um, not regarded as a prosumer. Well, I suppose it might have been regarded as a prosumer level camera when it came out. It's one of, if not the last Nikon DSLR that has the autofocusing motor built into the body. Um, they then reverted to using the uh, G series lenses where the autofocus motor was in the lens. This camera will autofocus both the G range of lenses and the earlier Ds, like the 28 to 200, which I used, albeit quite briefly. Nice lens, this weighty little thing, um, but nevertheless, a, a good lens. Uh, really quite, quite enjoyable. I'd forgotten how nice that lens is, actually. Um, so yeah, from the uh, compatibility point of view with regard to lenses, if you go for a newer um, but still very much second-hand Nikon DSLR, be aware that the later ones you're going to be relying on G-series lenses and that type to maintain autofocus. Manual focus on this is damn near impossible uh, because you've got this tiny LCD screen. Everything has to be done through the viewfinder and there's no real focusing aids. Uh, you've just got to trust to your eyesight that, um, that you nail focus. And I didn't on a couple of occasions, as you probably saw. Uh, I did put a note on the video saying that the issues with the compact flash card were not down to its capacity. This is four gig uh, because the firmware in here, it's set up for FAT32 which I think is uh, um, some way of partitioning uh, memory cards and drives. Uh, FAT32 means that in theory, this could use much, much larger memory cards than the four gig that I have in here now. Just to give you an idea, this four gig memory card allows me to take 340 odd images uh, before it gets filled. And that's shooting both RAW and JPEG at the same time. Um, this is a Gen 1 Nikon camera and the first generation of their DSLRs really have very restricted dynamic range as you probably saw. The ISO range is also very restricted. It goes from a minimum of 200 to a maximum of 1600. I certainly wouldn't use it above 400 so it's really very limited. Um, if you invest or own one of the second generation Nikon DSLRs, then their dynamic range is much improved. Again, it's down to better processor. So <clears throat> in summary, what did I think? Did I enjoy the experience? Yes, I enjoyed the experience. Um, as somebody with too many years um, under his belt, photographically speaking, um, it didn't phase me it frustrated me and if you own a mirrorless camera right now and you fancy having a go with one of these you will find it even more frustrating um, it's really it is just like going down the rabbit hole 
and uh, you're, you're stepping back in time. And um, if you do try it, be prepared for a little bit of frustration. But it can be very rewarding. I mean, I hope some of those images that you've seen um, prove that. Out of all the shots that I've shown you today, there's probably two or three that are what I call keepers. Um, so I hope you enjoyed the film. The second subject which I trailed in the lead up to this was me talking about aren't JPEGs better than RAW images and all that kind of thing because this has gone on and taken longer than I expected I'm going to put that into a future video so for the time being I'm going to say thank you very much for watching stay safe keep taking images no matter what equipment you have and please keep on enjoying it photography for enjoyment bye for now